All right, guys, welcome to the channel. Today is going to be a rapid engineering tech tips video uh, based on a question that was brought up by a subscriber who is also a product design engineer. So, and the question was, how do you minimize the appearance of a gate in an injection molded part? And so what I have here is a perfect example that I just so happened to have just got done designing. And this is the first uh, run of the part trial run, uh, not production parts yet, but uh, pretty darn close. And so this is a perfect example to talk about gate location because this is a very odd part. If you'll notice, so on the outside, the, the, the half of the mold that makes the outside of the bowl, bowl shape is called the cavity. And typically that's where your gate location will be, is on this side somewhere. And you'll notice that it's not there. And that's because this is a very specific type of mold design that, that made this part and it is called a reverse ejection or a side injection which means that the gate is actually on the core side again core side cavity side most of the time the gate is on the core side the uh, cavity side most of the, and in this case it's on the core side so how is that accomplished well, it takes it basically it easily doubles the mold price, uh, depending on the mold. Again, if you have a really big mold, that's going to be really expensive anyway. It might not double it, but it can it can easily double the mold price because of all the extra uh, components and design work that the mold designers have to do and mold makers have to do to make a, a part like this or make a mold mold that does this and so how they do it is typically this is the orientation so cavity side core side injection side and then the part the mold opens up goes this way and then plop it falls out and so the ejection is on the B side of the mold. So A side of the mold, B side of the mold, cavity side, core side. In this part, it's flipped. So this is still the A side, but it's the core, and the, the B side is the cavity. And so in order to accomplish that and still have the ejector pins B over here, they basically have to completely flip around the normal configuration of a mold, which is going to add cost because a typical in injection molding machine is designed to have ejection on the B side of the mold. It's got all the mechanisms and stuff for actuating the ejector pins. It's over here. And so if you want to flip around the orientation of the mold, now you have to put all the ejector pin uh, mechanisms, the ejection mechanisms over here. And that adds a bunch of thickness to normally you'd have the, you know, the, the gate would be starting over here and whatever, however thick the mold is. But now that all that extra thickness from having to accommodate the the ejection mechanisms means that now you have to have a long heated sprue a valve gate uh, which is another component and then you have to have a hydraulic cylinder on either side of the of the tool to actuate the ejector pins because normally that mechanism is over here and built into the to the uh, injection mold press and so it's it, it really is a lot of hassle and so there's there you really only want to uh, save uh, reverse or a side ejection for when you really need it but when you do really need it it can make wonderful parts like this that really have no no evidence on the outside that it was even that it was made by injection molding uh, on this part again this is a sample run uh, not not production parts yet you can see a little bit of a sink from that rib that's on the underside but really that's only that's the only indication and and that'll be gone by the time that the injection molders uh, get their process processing more finely tuned so you shouldn't be able to even see that
especially how thin it is. That's uh, less than a 50% uh, thickness rib over the uniform the uniform wall thickness. So there's no no good reason why that should be visible from the outside if the uh, injection molding processing parameters are dialed in correctly. So uh, one other option that you don't have to go to this extreme if you just to hide a gate. There is another option that's not quite as good, but is much uh, more cost effective and lets you have a traditional configuration of your mold. And that would be an edge gate. So an edge gate is normally a long, thin gate instead of being circular like this gate is. Which, oh, and by the way, that's called vate gate ve uh, vestige right there. and. I don't care about it because that the consumer is never going to see that. There's a, like multiple components that get installed into here that that will even if they were did you know somehow they'd have to get past a bunch of components is the point. So don't not worry about that gate vestige at all. But if you did have an edge gate, say like right 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 here would probably be a perfect place to put an edge gate. It would it goes right at a parting line which is why it's called an edge gate. And you couldn't have a rounded edge like I have right here. You can see that, see that rounded edge. It would have to be a sharp, a sharp edge. And then the uh, injection molding operator would have to break it off. And you would still see, uh, you know, however long it is, like like half an inch maybe would how be how, how wide it would have to be. And maybe about that thin right around here. Uh, and, and you'd still see that break point. But again, with uh, a strategic positioning of the, of the edge gate, you could really, really hide and make, you'd have to have a, a really keen eye to see that it had an edge gate uh, is, uh, as opposed to not being able to see it at all from the outside. So um, another, another consideration about gate location is I really, really like central gate gating. And that's because from an end, from, you know, uh, the end product standpoint, you get more uniform distribution of material properties uh, because the, the mold is really getting filled kind of symmetrically instead of starting over here. And so the beginning, the, your properties kind of change as uh, because the mold front the mold front degrades and gets cooled and 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 then by the time the the plastic wraps around this pin right here and comes together uh, it really doesn't want to uh, uh, have as much strength where the material comes together and so that's uh, this is like my perfect part that I would if, if I if cost was no object I would design I would I would pick the mold parameters the mold design parameters exactly like this every time but of course i can't because most of the time the cost versus benefit is not good enough to uh uh is not 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 good enough to to justify how expensive this mold was but with this particular part that is doing some sealing and is a visible highly aesthetic part central reverse side ejection was just a home run for everything that this part needed to be. So hope you, uh, hope you guys uh, can use that information. If you have any questions, shoot me a comment down below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really liked it, give me a subscribe and hit the little bell icon to get notified when I post new content. All right, I will catch you guys next time.